get a hobby, maintain your friendships, hang out with other people. Well, the first job is easy if you're willing to check your ego at the door. I did take the bar and I did graduate, but I decided to go directly into um, the entry-level positions or entry-level interviewing in Hollywood, I quickly realized that the, even with an Ivy League education and a law degree, that the only opportunities that would be there for me were at the assistant level. And eventually when I got on a desk, which really means being a secretary to, um, to an agent, I ended up working for some, some idiosyncratic agents. And they'll ask of you impossible assignments. Find Marlon Brando's phone number in Tahiti was one. And you just have to gulp and wait till the agent leaves, then say WTF, and you do it. I actually am proud of the choices that I made because I was very comfortable being um, self-reflective. If I'm going to be making no money working long hours and being given ridiculous assignments. I mean, one day I was asked to pick up $50,000 worth of gold chains for Mr. T, for real. But I at least knew that the quid pro quo had to be that I felt personal satisfaction and I could see a path from the bottom of the bottom rung of the ladder to a, a higher rung where I could have a meaningful career. Stories connect us, they unite us. I don't just love stories because it gives me an opportunity to escape by myself. I also feel that it enables me to know more about how all people are the same and how we're alike and how we're connected. And what's incredible about movies is that the impact of film can be exponential. I think it's taken me longer than my male counterparts to own my value. And even though the treatment, pay, acknowledgement, promotions that I have had are really, really close and really, really good, it isn't the same. It isn't the same. So I do think that that is uh, a kind of area where we hold ourselves back. And, and if you're going to hold yourself back, believe me, the people that you work for aren't going to say, oh, Tatala, oh, honey, you deserve more. It ain't going to happen that way. And I think it's complicated, at least for me, I can speak just for myself, because I have always felt that my career um, was not going to be a straight shot up but more of a kind of rolling wave so that I could raise my children. So I got pregnant when I was the head of production at a studio. And I became chairperson at a bigger studio when I was pregnant with my second daughter. You just do it. The men don't ask permission. The men don't say, is this a good time? You know, mother, may I? They just do it. They assume it is their entitlement. I think the advice I would give myself is to develop and maintain other interests while you are immersing yourself as singularly as I did in your career. I was just a crazy workaholic, you know, and I love what I do, and I'm solitary to begin with. So I was a nerdy little reader person to begin with. So if someone gives me work on the weekend, I'm happy. To, to spend 48 hours by myself working. But that's not healthy. That's not healthy. I mean, the most important message that I would give to young women and that I would give to my daughters is to fulfill your own ambition, whatever that ambition is. You know, live and lead your life fully. And don't anticipate 
that you're going to have to make some compromises or choices and preempt opportunities because you're making choices that aren't even upon you. Go for it in, at every level and then reassess. You can't do everything at the same time, always and forever. But if you look at your life and your career as a long winding river, you can get to your destination.